first of all, thank you for, for inviting me to, um, to this conference. It's a fascinating uh, group of people, and I'm very excited to be here. Uh, I'm Luis Arnal, uh, president of Insitum, um, and also known by that video that most of you saw on the, on the conference website uh, of me talking in an airplane. Um, um, quickly about Insitum. Insitum, as, as Mauro mentioned, uh, has been doing uh, innovation consulting for 13 years, in, mostly in, in, in the Americas. Uh, we work with, uh, with big companies. 95% uh, uh, of our projects are for big companies, helping them understand and innovate um, uh, for, for these markets. Um, we do a lot of uh, product design, service innovation, service design. Uh, user research, uh, brand strategy, and, and so forth. Um, and we have a lot of fun uh, 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 consulting with, this, with these companies because the type of challenges that they give us are very varied. Um, but before I start, let me ask a, an overall question. Who, who in the audience has played with Minecraft or, or knows what Minecraft is? Okay, so um, I would assume that uh, most of you, but Minecraft is an online game, and uh, if you have played with it, you know that you can play in two modes, well, in several modes, but mostly two modes. One is uh, the creative mode. You know what creative mode uh, means? Is that you have all the resources available. Um, you, have, uh, you have to create stuff, you know, with, uh, with blocks of uh, stuff. You know, you have unlimited amounts of wood, of stone, um, and you can uh, basically do whatever you want to do with uh, unlimited Lego pieces, you know, to, to, to put it in, in a material uh, side. Um, and in creative mode, uh, there are no big dangers. You just create. Uh, there are no dangers that destroy your stuff or that kill you. Uh, you, can, you can control the weather, the time. You can fly. Um, you can... Um, you, you have unlimited lives, so you, you never die, right? And uh, it's, it's really fun to play in, in creative mode. Uh, but there's another mode uh, that you can play with, and it's called uh, the survival mode. And you know what survival mode means? It means that you have to start from scratch. You have nothing uh, uh, when you start a game. You have to go and, and find uh, wood, and from wood, you have to craft your tools, and, and you know you have to obtain every resource. And you cannot control time, and you cannot control you know the dangers, you know creepers and zombies that attack you and, and may kill you, and, and and that's it. You know the, the game ends if they if they kill you. Um, so it's a very harsh environment, the the survival mode. It's also fun, but it's it's a harsh environment. So I'm using Minecraft as an analogy for um, showing the differences that um, we've seen in doing uh, service innovation or innovation consulting work in emerging markets or you know, de uh, developing markets, uh, mostly in, in Latin America and, and Africa, which is where, where we mostly do our work, and, um, and doing it in more developed markets like, like Germany. So I, I, I think that uh, that emerging market service design is playing Minecraft in survival mode because stuff isn't there yet for you to play uh, with. And there are dangers and there is limited resources and there are stuff that happens, you know, they may kill you. Yeah. Not, not literally, but, uh, but uh, you, you are in a, in a, in a more um, aggressive mode uh, versus doing it in, in developed markets where you have unlimited resources, of course, you, you will say, you are, he's not talking about Germany, yeah? uh, but you, you have a lot of resources and you have uh, people supporting this and you have you know, 250 people going to a service design conference, which is uh, you know, uh, amazing. Uh, I couldn't think of organizing a service design conference in, in South America because only 10 people would come, you know? and they would come from uh, you guys. You know? uh, <laughs> so, um, so what I want to talk uh, very quickly is about the four dangers of survival mode, four dangers that we find um, pretty, um, pretty frequently when we do um, this type of innovation consulting. And we've done it for, yeah, I don't know, 13 years. You know, we didn't call it service design before, but, um, but we have uh, uh, been, been trying to convince clients uh, to invest in this, in this type of project 
uh, uh, recently. So the first danger or the first assumption that, uh, that many people and, and many of our clients have when they come and do research uh, and, and innovation with us is, is they find a very heterogeneous market. You, know? um, you will say, well, that's obvious. You know? you, we know that there are, there are socioeconomic levels, uh, but it's much more than just income. You know, if you see, if you analyze the Gini index, you know, the Gini index, you know, the, the human development uh, or the, the income distribution index that the UN uh, publishes, the Gini index for South America or for Africa is, is, is uh, one of the uh, biggest ones in, in the world, which means that income distribution is most uneven in these countries. Uh, it is also in China and India, but, you know, because of, of different reasons. But the fact is that it's not only income, it's also... Um, education, it's opportunity, it's, it's a cultural um, um, uh, plethora of, of, of different people with different interests and, and different um, situations that make it very hard for you to design for because suddenly you are not faced with one homogeneous market where you know that more or less, you know, like 60% of people are like this and you can design based on that. No, here is like... <coughs> Well, more or less, is 30% of people are like you're thinking, you, and, and, and the rest, well, they are very different, right? So you need to choose who are you going to be designing for um, and, and, and design based on that, you know, and sacrifice the rest. Um, so here's an example. Viva Aerobus is one of the worst airlines that I've flown. Um, it's it's uh, super bad, you know, they don't treat you well. The, the flight delays are a rule, you know, um, uh, nobody helps you, but it's fantastic because it's dirt cheap. And you know what? It provides a service of connecting airla uh, the, the plane with the buses. So you can fly to somewhere that, that is cheaper to fly and then take a bus for four hours and reach your town, right? And a lot of people fly that airline. And I'm thinking, you know, is that service innovation, really? You know, treating people bad and, and, and flight delays and, and so forth? People must hate it, right? I hate it, but people, you know, the rest of people don't hate it. They love it because it's cheap and because they compare it to an experience of taking a bus for 14 hours, right? So they can take an airline that has delays, that is, uh, you know, they don't have anything uh, special about it, uh, and that connects you with a bus, you know, and instead of 14 hours in a bus, you're going to be six hours late, right? Or, or it's, it's a journey of six hours. And that is good for people, right? Sometimes. So sometimes doing um, uh, just enough solutions is, is good for, 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 the, uh, for the company and for, for users, right? So here the lesson is you need to understand very well the mental models and the, the, the frameworks and the way people value stuff in order for you to design around that. And, and by this, I mean doing in-depth research, right? How many social scientists do I have here, approximately? You know, see, you know, it's four people, four social scientists, right? Doing uh, service innovation, right? And I'm sure in your companies you have um, many more, but it is important for designers to learn a little bit more and be more humble to do better user research and understand the frameworks uh, in people's minds and not only going through the experience and, and gaining insights that way. The second lesson, you know, we've seen it in this conference and in many others, right? Base your customer journey on fucking research, right? Do, do your job, you know, do, do your, uh, the, 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 the immersion that you need to do in order to understand these different types of people. Right, as uh, you know, uh, an advertising guy said, you know, wrongly, you know, a long time ago, he said, if you want to understand how a lion hunts, don't go to the zoo, go to, he said, the jungle, but he has no clue that lions don't live in the jungle. <laughs> <laughs> that happens with uh, advertising people sometimes. Uh, so go to the savanna, right, which is where the where the lions really hunt, right. So the second lesson is. Uh, Value is not always quality, right? We tend to assume that, you know, the higher quality experience we provide, the more value uh, people will obtain from it. And, and sometimes this is not the case in, 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 in uh, emerging markets. Um, 
sometimes people you know, want to make it work before they make it better, right? The problem is that once you make it work, you know, there is no way to make it better, right? And I use this image as an analogy of, of something that eventually worked, right? But it's, it's horrible, you know, you don't want that, you know, uh, uh, 100 feet from, from your house, uh, unfinished, you know, uh, connections and so forth. So um, unfortunately, the decision of the client sometimes is uh, just do it good enough, you know, that good enough is, is, is good enough. Um, and, uh, and, and they don't have, not even them or, or, the, or the users, have a holistic view of the efficient use of resources, right? In developed market, you assume that people will understand, you know, that, uh, that spending, um, you know, uh, 10 minutes doing something, it's worth uh, that much time. And, and down there, it's, it's not the case. Uh, many people would spend three times the time, you know, for saving a few, a few cents. So there is no holistic understanding of, of uh, benefit, time, and resources. So where in Germany, you know, time is precious and you have plenty of money, right? Uh, in em emerging markets, people have a lot of time and very few money, right? So you have to design around that, right? Um, so the lesson here is focus on what value means for customers. And value is often not quality, maybe not money, maybe it's uh, reputation, or maybe it's efficiency, or maybe it's... Um, uh, um, uh, it's something different, right? The third lesson, and I have only five minutes, it's uh, the organizational barriers to implement service design. They are super high uh, down there, right? So designing the service is not the end. That's the beginning of the journey. This is a case where we, uh, we helped a, a company, you know, do user research. So what, uh, about designing services for, for e-wallet and, and e-money. In, in El Salvador, you know, go figure. Uh, anyway, so we designed a, a bunch of services for, for people to adopt e-wallet, um, and, um, and, and the client was very excited, you know, with the solutions. Eventually, what happened, you know, they didn't implement uh, from the f seven solutions that we provided, they only implemented one, right? And they're thinking about the second one. Uh, what happened is that uh, we didn't educate the client in, in, in the implementation. We, we didn't accompany the client in the implementation. Um, we were not um, uh, um, uh, sensible enough to make them think that those ideas were theirs and not ours, right? They thought they were our idea. So, of course, if it's my idea, it's not a good idea. You have to make them think that it's, it's their idea. And you have to help them uh, define the what uh, and the how you're going to implement it, right? So uh, service design is on, not only about, you know, the, the nice graphic and the infographic and the, the customer journey, but about making that a reality, right? So don't under, uh, overestimate your client's ability to implement, you know? Uh, sometimes we tend to overestimate their ability, and we say, well, th uh, this is enough for you to implement. No, you have to go step by step and, and, and follow this uh, through with them. And the fourth uh, barrier is a poor support systems that exist in this in these countries. Of course, infrastructure, money, time, technology. The government sometimes, is, instead of helping you, it's 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 a big barrier, uh, uh, blocking blocking innovation, right? Um, so in this case, you know, we uh, we do a lot of work with pharmaceutical companies. We developed you know uh, 20 solutions for improving oncologic treatment, you know, in in the public uh, healthcare system which, you know, by the way, has about three or four systems in each country. Um, um, and eventually, a lot of those solutions uh, were hard to implement because of government restrictions, because of corruption. To implement those solutions, the government wanted some money, you know, to, for things to flow smoothly. Of course, our client, you know, with compliance and, and, and lawyers <coughs> behind, would never accept that. You know, I, I would never accept that. Um, and, and they didn't implement, you know, a, a thing. So, um, so often, you know, the ideal experiences can be implemented. So you have to satisfy, you know, b provide some a, a solution that is good enough for it to be implemented, but sacrificing uh, a lot of things. Uh, and it, this can be frustrating, you know, for me and my teams, you know. But it's always better to do at least something than doing nothing, right? Um, so here the lesson is, you know, live happy with suboptimal solutions. You know, eventually, you know, we can fight and fight, but we have to live happy, you know, and, and, and think that, you know, suboptimal solutions are still solutions, right? Um, 
So, and, and the, last, uh, the last consideration, you know, I want to share with you the, the law of innovation stability, which means that for every great idea that you have, uh, mostly in emerging markets, there is always a, an opposing force, an opposing person that is doing everything that they can to copy, to harm, to critique, to destroy, to imitate, or to profit from your idea, right? And often this is done illegally. So you have to be very careful uh, uh, and, and just be able to live with it. Um, I'm not a pessimistic person, but I love to uh, set things, you know, as realistic as possible. So when you are going to do innovation for emerging markets, you understand, you know, that it's a bit harder and uh, play some Minecraft in, uh, in uh, uh, survival mode so you get a feeling of what it is like. Thank you very much.